Sorry, <clears throat> I'm a little nervous. I've never gone out with someone I met online before. So... You want to go screw in the toilet? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Tell me you love me. Uh... Hello, Erin. Thank you for joining us. Yay! Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How are you? Yeah, great. I'm excited to be here. Where did your journey begin, first of all? Yeah, um, when I was in the fifth grade, my mother brought me an ad from the local newspaper in a little teeny tiny town called Atchison, Kansas. And she said, would you want to do something like this and it was an ad for uh the local community theater doing the sound of music and then it went from there she coached me at the audition and because she had done some uh musical theater and theater when she was younger too and that was it honestly you know so it runs in the family mm -hmm. yeah my family is pretty much singing all the time i, I grew up on musicals and that's actually where i started too <laughs> so so you have a group called the best workshop ever, correct? Yeah. So um, I run. Well, I have a couple things. Best I run acting uh, workshop ever. Yeah, yeah. I have a couple. I run an online acting studio um, called EEB Studios, and um, then a, a separate community I have is best acting workshop ever, and it's an online program. And we work on mindset, money, and self-tape auditioning. Mm -hmm. I think those are the three things that if you really master, you will have longevity in the industry. But mindset, first and foremost. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be able to uh, break those barriers within yourself. And, and yeah. So which role of yours so far has made you work the hardest? There is a film that's on Netflix called Mine Nine, and it, it ran the Indie Film Festival circuit in 2019. Yes, yes, yes. And that role, um, the film is, well, the film's based on three real coal mining disasters that have happened in the United States, and the writer and director kind of melded those stories together. And in preparation for the film, he took some of the cast out to Appalachia and we went three quarters of a mile down into an actual coal mine. Oh. I, I just had no clue, no oh. clue at oh. all. The oh. highest, at least in this particular mine, the highest height at any given point is four feet. So these men, 12, 16 hours a day, seven days a week, often are either, you know, they're either on their knees or they're literally bent over mining this coal and it's it's not the, the dangers aside it, it it's just day in and day out so physically difficult on these men and they end up getting black lung over time because of what's of course what they're ingesting every single day nice. it was the most eye-opening thing and when we got back to atlanta we filmed it in atlanta i flipped on the lights at my apartment and i realized wow I have never once considered where this comes from. We're just gifted with so much, you know, privilege, you know, right. in our lives. And these men, it was just so eye opening. And the film, it's just been a blessing just to bring light to the coal mining industry. But I had to learn an accent for it, but also knowing that you're really representing real people. Yes in this film, that was the most fulfilling thing I've ever been a part of. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I, I know that there are a lot of deaths due to black lung from the coal mines. And, you know, we do take the simple thing of, simple things like flicking on a light switch for granted, you know, we don't necessarily have to use coal or gas unless we actually want to. Um, we have to learn to be more thankful. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, and it's it's just one of these, you know, so much of film and TV is for pure entertainment. And that is great. We need, especially <laughs> right now in, in our world, we need to be able to be, to, to laugh. We need to be able to be sucked into a, an, an amazing story. There's value in that. But I also find so much value in, in being part of a story that really matters. And this is exactly that. And the director, Eddie Mansori, he's also the writer. He grew up in this area. Th these were his, you know, friends and, and, and family, you know, that he was a, that, that he derived the story from. And so it just hits real personally for him. But again, for the entire coal mining industry, it, it just, it just uplifts that they don't exactly make front news. Right. Patients, you know, and so it's just, every once in a while we get to be a part of a story that really matters and it, it just it's such a I'm, blessing i'm sure that they feel like it's they feel remembered they feel valued mm -hmm. and i think we forget to to do that I, I really think we we just take a lot of things and and people and their work and everything for granted it's it's sad but that's what we do it's you know we we become so accustomed to instant gratification that things are just there all of a sudden. Yeah. So, yeah. But so what was the hardest thing about that film for you to do? Um, I think we did a night shoot. Uh, we, it was late November and no, Georgia doesn't get, you know, there's, if somebody from New York or Chicago or somebody's listening, they're going to be like, ah, you know, <laughs> we don't quite get the winners they do. But it was, it was very cold that night. It was an overnight shoot. Um, there's, there's a scene where I'm on a, riding a four-wheeler in the rain. And they created, you know, fake rain, which looked, I mean, it was just amazing. You know, filmmaking, it's just an amazing what they can do. But, but the producers, like, between scenes so that I wouldn't get pneumonia, they had a car that was on, you know, and, and the heat was on. And then I had heat warmers, you know, and all my clothes and I would, and then like a cup of hot cider or something <laughs> and it pulled me into the car immediately between takes. It was just interesting. Um, and they, they did an amazing job and I didn't get sick. Um, <laughs> but it, it's an overnight, you know, yeah. overnight suits are rough to begin with. Plus you're freezing, plus you're getting rained on. Yeah, we, we had one of those, um which was, I, I can't remember which project it was, but it was pouring and it was cold and oh. like kerosene heaters out or whatever they are, little uh, hot packs. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we earn it. Sometimes, you know, we're, we're actors get paid a wild amount of money, you know, to, to do what, to do what they do, especially at the highest level. But you know, there are times where it's like, hey, I think I earned my, my wage today. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like, are we, okay, I, you know, <laughs> I don't care about the time, I love being here, but geez, I'm freezing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you consider a booking the room actor's mindset? A booking the room actor's mindset. Well, you, you know how we're told to that we go into an audition. Oh yeah. Not to go there and, and get the job, but to go there and book the room to, yeah. to show, you know, play. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I think it's this idea of knowing you're not gonna get it. And if somebody's like, they're like, okay, that's so negative. No, but hang with me. If you go into literally not caring about the outcome, which is hard, but mm -hmm. I think that that's something that's trainable and that's something that you can learn as an actor, then you truly love the process and you're not disappointed when you don't book. I right. think booking should be icing on the cake, but if you're going to spend your life serving someone else's project, you have to understand you're not going to spend as probably as much time on set as if you're creating your own projects. Yeah. You no. Know? And, and one way to let go of the outcome is to have something you're always working on that will fill your creative cup. So you're not waiting on the industry to fill it for you. That part. <laughs> Create your yeah. own content always. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I do have one more question. Well, all right, two. <laughs> what? 
is your favorite musical song? Oh, gee, many Christmas. <laughs> oh. Well, that's so hard because it's like, first of all, what's your favorite musical? Yeah. And then it's, it's like, I don't even know. Uh, well, I'm in love with The Greatest Showman. I just. <laughs> what's that song? Yeah, um, I will never. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that song from The Greatest Showman. I play that over and over. I don't know. I mean, I'm old school. I, I, I was raised on Rodgers and Hammerstein, but there's stuff from Jekyll and Hyde. Um, Ooh, that's good stuff. Yes. Oh, the older I, stuff is marvelous. You've got I dreamed, you know, you got your Les Mis, I dreamed a dream. Um, just, just all the classics. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff in Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I haven't, the only musical I have yet to catch up on is that Dear Evan, Evan Henson. I haven't seen that yet. Have I have you? not either. Yeah. No, everybody raves, raves about it. Yeah, oh, I am so sorry. That's the hardest question. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right, well, we'll move on. The final, final question for you would be, do you have any words of encouragement for actors, future actors? Uh, have something else that you love to do. Because if all you have is acting, you'll probably be really unhappy. And I know that firsthand because that was me for a long time. And I even booked a really, you would think, would have been a really huge project with the famous actors that you want to work with, that we all want to work with, thinking this was going to be my big break. And I put everything into it. I put my, all my energy. I hired a publicist. This was for uh, Stephen King's cell back in the day with Sam Jackson and John Cusack, just to give some reference. I, I want to know what that was like too, after you're done. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this filming was an amazing experience. Both of those men are just, they are just consummate professionals. They're just phenomenal, phenomenal men um, that are also phenomenal actors, but they're just great people. The whole shoot was a dream, but because it was Stephen King, I just thought, oh my God, I'm going to be the next horror movie girl. I, I, I got, Yeah, I was like, I'm going to go... I'm going to make so much money because these things get taken off with the comic cons too. Yeah. You can make so much more money there. And I, I just thought, Oh my gosh. And long story short, they had some issues with their distributors and it did not get distributed well. And a lot of folks haven't even heard of it. Um, but because again, who was attached to it, I just assumed this was going to be a big blockbuster hit. And I, I just spiraled into a crazy dark place mm it affected a lot of areas of my life and um it's that expectation yeah yeah and I, you every I, time well and but you, you know you see who's attached you see who the writer is you think oh my god and um but I use that as my story now when I teach mindset to actors because if I had maybe had a little bit more experience and it was my first big thing I didn't know I didn't know anything you know, and it's just, I, I realized you have to have something else that you're passionate about too, because this is a brutal industry. It's brutal. And listen, you might be one of those 2.5 that makes their living doing it and is wildly successful. And God, I wish that on every actor that hears this, you included. I do. I really wish that. But if that's not the case, I know a lot of really desperate, unhappy actors, and it's just not worth it, you know. And um, I, I, yeah, you have to be viral, mm -hmm. right? You have but to. I came back. I came back, and I learned about affirmations, and I learned about neuroplasticity and the ability to reverse engineer a belief system. And it's all science based. This isn't some feel good woohoo foo-foo stuff yeah. it's real it's real and I thought dang and it would just change it changed my life and I and 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 I do scenes now I don't audition anymore oh. I put together a scene and I put it on tape and that makes me feel like I went to acting class that day right even if I'm the one coaching myself <laughs> so 
like it's it's semantics it's the way you you look at it it's not getting wrapped up in oh this is a guest star this pays seven thousand dollars a day this recurs for three days i can make sure you get to let that crap go focus on the work focus on the work and you have to let it go yeah. but having the tools to let it go that's what took me a while to learn but I can honestly say I'm a happy actor. I also coach though. So I get to talk to about acting about five days a week. And that makes me so happy. <laughs> you know, so whatever it is, whatever the other thing is that makes you happy, I want to encourage you to put just as much effort into that. Right. And then auditions are just a delight. Mm -hmm. They're not stressful. You're not trying to figure out what they want. They don't know, or they would give out direct off. You think they don't have enough actors. They could cast this project. Of course they do. They don't know exactly what they want. And that's why they hold auditions. Yes. Yes. You know? And you just relax into it. And, and I'm probably happier today than I've ever been in my career. And I haven't booked anything honestly, since my, uh, yes, I have, whatever. It doesn't matter, <laughs> but I have it nothing that's come on the screen right. since my nine. uh some stuff went went to the went to the side with with the pandemic uh that i was supposed to be part of but i mean whatever you know so anyway that's probably a really long answer just to you have to have something else that you love and 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 maybe they complement each other you know mm -hmm. i'm very lucky in that coaching completely com complements acting <laughs> you know, but whatever yeah. it is for you, you know? Yeah, that is important because it, it's easy to, you know, this is, this is everything you want to do. It's easy to like put all that passion and, and, and desire into everything and then things not go the way you think that they're going to go and for you to get burned out or thrown into a deep depression because it's just not working out. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and, and it's hard now, but I'm not a famous actor. It gets harder it gets a lot harder when you're cast, you know, you hear all these stories. Uh, oh, Carrie Washington even has a great story before she got scandal. She was cast in a pilot and then she was recast. Ooh. Can you imagine you think this pilot's getting picked up all right? and they recast you and mm. I, it's just, it gets harder the bigger you get. So don't think getting into this, that it gets, Easier. It gets easier. And I, I'm an unknown actor, but yeah. I've dealt with some stuff. I'm like, oh, this sucks. It doesn't have to suck. It's the way that you look at it, but that's life. It's right. the way that you look at life. So any kind of mindset work that an actor does on their career, it's going to bleed over into your life. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this just, so it's just, it's every, I think it's everything for actors. It's everything. I think it's everything for actors. It's what keeps you, <clears throat> keeps you even kill, balanced. Mm -hmm. It's so very important. So, so very important. I cannot stress that enough. I, I, I found myself driving myself crazy at times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, it, 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 it's, you know, I, I've said this probably in a different interview, but it's, it's all about learning and non-learning and, and actually open, keeping yourself open to change and not being so guarded and, and stubborn about mm -hmm. everything or, or judging everything, but. Yeah. Or blaming everyone and everything around you, blaming your agent. Oh, I'm not getting auditions because she's not doing her job. Are you sure? <laughs> I mean, are you really sure? Because chances are that she is, or he is. Yeah. You know, now I get an audition and I'm like, girl thank you so much i'm like sweet i haven't been in this casting director for a year this is such a blessing right thank you know you. i know my chances of booking are not high right. because of the sheer numbers that, you know that they call in so but again it goes back to if you're spending your career trying to get jobs from someone else you're gonna be you waiting a long time yeah you need to consider that you know and and there's a lot of other actors that that approach their careers too but there's just so much opportunity now yeah i mean it's a digital age you can create something posted on inst i have a student who's 
in a web series right now and their uh, distribution channel is Instagram. Yeah, I believe a casting director, uh, Jeremy Gordon, also made a series called Quarantine on Instagram. I believe that's who it is. I hope that's who it is. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you, if that's really what you want to do, then do it. Mm -hmm. If you get paid for it, that's, that's a blessing and that's icing on the cake. Right. You've got to get back to the roots of why you loved acting in the first place. But if you want to get paid for it, that's the business. And you've got, you've got to relax into that and yeah. be okay with that, you know? Well, thank you very much for sharing your time and wisdom with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a pleasure, pleasure talking to you and meeting you. Awesome. Yeah, girl, you too. Thank you for this. So everybody, get popping. <laughs>